wireless connection. Hi there! <laughs> Welcome to my home, my kitchen. We're cooking. We love cooking. Danny and I love cooking together. We had um, we had a little bit of an emergency in that um, in, in that the fire alarm went off. <laughs> So although we enjoy cooking, we're not great at it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> and, and so anyway, we have a lot of fun in the kitchen, but Danny's always the, the one that puts out the disasters or takes care of the disasters. There's a little bit too much habanero in here. <laughs> I just made some cornbread and I put some fire in it, as in habanero, but I think that that's the wrong... That's what set off the fire alarm. I'm sure. I'm sure. That's what set off the smoke detector. Yes, that's what went off, the smoke detector. So I'm not quite sure how anybody's going to eat that now. <laughs> well, I can eat it, but you guys, I mean, you know. Yeah. It's all good. So, Absolutely. So what Hello, we... this is Anita Moore Johnny, and it's, it's Saturday morning. It's not Sunday. No, we're oh doing it on god. Saturday today. You're early. <laughs> I'm like 23 hours early. My god, no wonder I'm not set up. <laughs> I should be on the other side of the camera. Today, Milena's joined us. So I'm so happy Milena's here. And she's actually come to have lunch with us. Which so means we got if Milena's behind the camera, everything will actually work. Yeah, the video will be fine. There'll be no hissing sound. There'll be no funny... <laughs> yes. <laughs> There'll be no bald head kind of crawling behind me like you no, saw last week. No, the bald head is in plain view at this point. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go over here to where I live. So we're making omelets, um, spicy omelets with onions, cheese, mushrooms, and serrano peppers. And I've just um, put a, a cornbread in the oven. <laughs> Someone's wishing you happy birthday because they see the happy birthday oh balloons. Gosh, thank you. Okay, so that was from a month ago. My birthday was a month ago. But these balloons last forever and I just don't have the heart to get rid of them. This is the problem. Um, so today I want to welcome all of your questions. Please give me your questions. And um, so while I'm cooking, I'm going to be answering your questions. And I say while I'm cooking, but I use that phrase loosely because actually the heavy lifting is usually done by Danny so um, so he's he does all the heavy lifting I just come and kind of flavor things and do my thing but um, but while we're doing this I will be happy to take your questions but just to kick it off I wanted to speak a little bit about food because people write to me sometimes and they say things like you know, I don't know what's healthy, what's not healthy. Do you believe certain foods lead to cancer? And what's your opinion on different nutrition and so on? So my theory or my take on it uh, is just relax and eat what feels good. Listen to your body and really just eat what feels good to you, what feels right to you. And I say this for a couple of reasons. One is because there is so much information out there and we get bombarded by information all the time. And so, um, and a lot of this information is conflicting, it's contradictory, and so um, the confusion that causes the stress and the fear is worse for you than eating a piece of chocolate with sugar. So, and, I'm, and, this, and I say this from experience. So the second thing is, I've been through all this myself. When I had cancer, I used to read and research everything that caused cancer. So here's what I find really interesting, is that if you look at the number one cause of illnesses, whether it's cancer, whether it's heart disease, the number one cause is actually stress. Now what is stress? Stress is the fear of failing, the fear of not having enough hours in the day, the fear of uh, shame, the fear of not being good enough. It's fear, 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 fear. It's the fear of illness, the fear of this. Stress is actually fear. But when you read up, so on the one hand, the number one cause of illness is stress. But then when you research, what do I do about the illness? Very little information comes up to tell you that you're supposed to reduce fear. 
all the information that comes to you that bombards you is information on nutrition on drugs on medication on all that kind of stuff to manage your stress but you know you don't need all that stuff the main thing is to not be stressed and to enjoy your food enjoy what you eat have fun with friends and and be a little bit more casual about it i was when i had cancer i used to um uh, I, I used to read books on all the cancer-causing foods and my favorite foods like chocolate and things like that uh, I believed caused cancer and so I believed that um, I, I used to believe at that time after reading things was that chicken hormones from chicken cause cancer pesticides cause cancer milk causes cancer because the the hormones in milk mimic um, breast hormones and so on and so I became so paranoid about eating things I also started taking loads of supplements and if ever I missed my dose of supplements I would become really fearful so I kept thinking oh my gosh is the cancer in me growing and there was this fear that the cancer is growing if I don't eat the right things does any of, do any of you relate to what I'm saying I would love for you to comment if you relate to that that you have this fear about what you're eating and what you're putting in your body because you think if you eat the wrong thing the cancer is growing so what I want to tell you is relax because I found over time that I would be fearful of one food and then a month later there would be contradiction contradicting information saying that food is fine I would be gobbling up lots of another food that I thought was healing and the following month I'd hear it was really bad for you it was causing cancer so now after having died I realized what was killing me was the fear not the food it was the fear it was the stress that is so much worse for your body so I tune into my body I try and cut down on gluten only because it makes me feel better no judgment people eat gluten it's fine once in a while I do eat gluten because um, I enjoy a dessert every now and then and, and sometimes they ha it has gluten um, that's why today we're making gluten-free cornbread and we're making omelets um, I eat eggs I eat protein I love spicy hot food I'd given all that up when I was sick and it made me miserable. Today I'm so much happier and much more relaxed about food. So yeah, I would love to hear some of your questions. Excellent. Um, so we have a couple of questions about food. Someone's asking about um, animals. You know, if we know what, if we know, I'm so sorry, I, I kind of lost the question. Here we are. Okay, Olivia is saying, <clears throat> um, if we choose our lives prior to coming to this earth, why do animals choose to come here knowing they will be killed and eaten? maybe that's the service that they offer to people um as far as i'm concerned i i i believe that all animals need to be treated well i'm not um uh, i'm not against eating meat and i know that there are people who are who get quite angry when i say that but i have no judgment because if we're angry at people who eat meat we will be angry at a huge percentage of this planet but what does make me angry or sad is when people treat animals cruelly. If we're going to eat the meat, we at least need to respect the, the, the creatures that have sacrificed their life to give us protein. We need to treat them well. So even though I do eat eggs, I do eat fish, I eat chicken from t time to time, I make sure that, the, um, that that these have been responsibly grown, responsibly caught, so that there is no suffering for the animal. Um, and, and you know, some people do need to eat animal protein. Danny needs to eat animal protein. When he goes vegetarian for long periods of time, he actually does feel weak and faint and unwell and sick. Um, he's basically a very robust and strong guy, and he knows what his body needs to maintain that. So that's my take on that Kristen asked if you believe that nutrition helps with healing do you do you believe that there's any correlation yeah. or if, it, if it's important it is and the biggest importance is what you feel about what you're eating for me that's that's hugely important how do you feel about the food you're eating if you're feeling that um, fearful or if you're feeling like oh I hate this food but I better eat it because it's medicinal it may help you but what I always say is do it from a place of love um, the first thing the bigger picture 
is that you know is is about loving yourself so loving yourself means loving your life some people find it hard to love themselves but when i say love yourself i also mean love your life and that's a gauge as to whether you're loving yourself or not and it's easier for you to think in this terms i have to love my life so if you love your life you want to live long and if you love your life you're going to be doing things that you love and that's why you love your life you love the people in your life that's why you love your life and that's why you want to live long and because you want to live long you want to take care of yourself and then choose the foods from that perspective not from the perspective of oh i'm scared of cancer i got to avoid cancer i got to avoid illness that's the wrong reasons to eat healthy foods someone asked uh irena asked little wine okay yeah absolutely um you know as long as you're having fun with life see drinking and addictions are two different things completely different things if you enjoy a glass of wine here and there a glass of champagne you're out with friends you have a good time that's great you're not escaping you are enjoying you're enjoying life to the fullest but when you need alcohol or drugs or anything to escape that's a whole different arena it's about loving life and living life fully it's not about escaping life Michaela uh had a brain injury uh during a horse riding accident and she's having a hard time uh recovering. She has oh. severe digestive discomfort. She's not sure how to how to let go. She's and she doesn't want to suffer. Help, she says. Wow. I'm really sorry about hearing that. So the person riding Michaela is she the one who had the injury who's yes. riding yes. it? Yes. Yeah. She Okay, She's so in discomfort, my, yeah. My sense is that in addition to all the discomfort you're going through, you're also judging yourself for everything you're going through. You're kind of this is my sense and I'm sensing that you are feeling like a failure because you haven't healed yet. So, um I want to actually, I mean, if you were here physically, I'd just give you a hug, but I want you to spend time with people who love you i want you to start to honor yourself love yourself and love yourself through what you're going going through um pretend that your best friend somebody you love your child your best friend someone you care for is going through what you're going through how would you treat them what would you say to them what would they need to hear that's how i want you to treat yourself i really want you to start with that and 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 I think that you'll also you'll start to notice yourself feeling better even if you start with that. And what I'll do is there'll be more videos coming down the line and I'll do more videos to help people that are really going through deep illnesses or serious situations where they feel um like so much discomfort that they feel they can't improve their lives. I'll be working on more videos like that so stay tuned. But in the meantime, please be kind with yourself. Susan mentions she heard you on Hey House radio yesterday talking about forgiveness and her question is about knowing who you are. You know, there's there've been so many years of adjusting, conforming. How do you find what is true about you? Um so the first step I would say is it I find it's actually easier to identify what is not you and let go of those things. So instead of trying to figure out who am I who am I the question to ask is what is not me what am I holding on to that's not me and the clues to this is what have I been doing that don't feel like they're me they don't honor me what have I been saying yes to when I mean no and really get deep and be honest like have you been saying yes to things that you really wanted to say no to but just um you're too much of a people pleaser and that's why you can't you're not able to say no identify those things and when we're able to let go of what is not us then what really is us starts to shine through it becomes easier to see who you really are um kibuni knows it's a little off topic but wants to know if you can talk about suicide and feeling stuck Uh, this person struggles with feeling with, stuck. With feeling stuck and feeling suicidal. 
So what I would want you to know is life can change in an instant. Like my life, it changed in an instant. I mean, from one moment I was going from dying to suddenly re regenerating cells and living. And, and so everything, situations can change in an instant. We suddenly see things differently and everything changes. We get an email that can change our lives. Like I got the email from Hay House saying that they wanted to publish my book and Wayne Dyer had discovered my story. Things can change in an instant. So never lose hope. Never lose hope is number one. And number two, don't take your life because you don't know what's coming up. There could be gifts waiting for you. There could be a reason for you going through what you're going through. And you might take your life before the gifts are presented to you. So don't take your life. Even though it's beautiful on the other side. I don't want to scare people and say, uh, don't take your life because you'll go to hell. Because you won't. The truth is you won't. But don't take your life because there are gifts waiting for you here. And things can change for you in an instant. Ange asks, do you meditate? You know, that's a great question because the answer is, is going to be yes and no because there was a time when I used to think, oh, I have to meditate, I have to spend more time meditating until I realized that we're supposed to create a life that's a meditation. So what I do is if I feel that um, my life is so stressful that I need to meditate, the message to me is that my life shouldn't be so stressful that I need to meditate. My life itself should be so pleasurable or so beautiful or I should be so in love with my life. I need to be, the, so I need to change my life. I need to do things so that my life is so much fun that I don't feel the need to meditate. The whole of my life feels like a meditation. And I, okay, okay go sorry. ahead. You I can keep more. asking. Okay. asking. Um, I'm gonna just, boil the water because okay. I'm actually going to make some tea. One of my favorite things is chai. <laughs> okay. Tom is asking, he's saying hello from the UK and he's asking, are you working here anytime soon? Will you be in the UK? In the UK? Oh, absolutely. I'm going to be speaking in Bristol on June 6th. I'm glad you asked. Um, we can always post the link later. But I'm coming to Europe um, in a couple of weeks. I think I leave on May 8th and I head to Europe and I'm doing a seven city tour and it finishes in Bristol, UK. That's the last stop. So yeah, I'd love to see you there. Okay. I'm doing a full day workshop, by the way. I don't like calling them workshops because they're kind of more fun than that, but, but um, it's gonna be a full day where we can spend time together and, um, and you know everybody kind of brings their energy in and it's quite beautiful. Um. Lo lo lots of love, lots of thanks, <laughs> um, lots of sharing where love they are. Too. Bridget yes. asks, um, can fear-based messages sometimes be a warning sign, like telling you not to do something or go somewhere? Or if my child wants to go somewhere but I feel fear, can that be a warning sign? Or is it always just fear-based projection and not connected to reality? So sometimes when you get the feeling of fear, yes. is that a warning? So, um not necessarily okay so I want to explain this when your higher self is giving you a warning and giving you a fear-based message it gives it to you in a very um, in a way that doesn't feel fearful but more like in a way that gives you guidance on how to get out of that fear-based situation so let me see if I can articulate this better. Um, the difference between the messages that are coming from our inner self, our inner mystic, our higher self, whatever we want to call it, our connection to the divine, the difference between the messages that are coming from our connection to the divine and the fear-based messages that are projections from the outer world is that the messages from the divine are always make us feel safe and loved even if it's a warning about something dangerous that's going to happen it's not going to instill fear in you it's going to give you a method of getting out of the fear-based place it's going to uh, so in a, so to give you an example it won't be like oh you're about to get run over by a car it'll be more like turn this way to avoid the car 
So something like that. Excellent. Everyone loves Danny, by the way. I just have to throw that out there. We're getting a lot of fan mail for Danny in the, in the comments. I, 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 and I love cooking together with him because he makes it so easy for me. And Mary says, I just wanted to say that I love your spirit. Thank you for being. Oh, thank you. I'm, I mean, this is so fun. Lindy asks, if you are a caregiver, how can you help without losing yourself? Caregivers have it have a really challenging job. Um, health caregivers, nurses, healers, because um, they have to be careful that they're not absorbing everything or that they are not wearing themselves out. So the first thing I would say is that make sure you take time out every single day um, for yourself. You have to take care of yourself. Now caregivers, people who are naturally caring, they feel it's um, <clears throat> they they feel that it's selfish to take care of themselves. They feel that time could be better spent taking care of someone else. But in actuality, if you don't take care of yourself, you get drained and you bring that energy with you when you're caring for this other people. This is a people. reminder: cornbread. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alexa. So that's Alexa. And Alexa is reminding me that I have to check on my cornbread, which I put in the oven. The one that, when you saw us earlier, um, we were kind of putting out the smoke alarm for. Ooh, it needs just a little more time. Alexa, say hello. Hi. <laughs> we were having fun with Alexa earlier. Ask, ask her what you, know, you asked I her. I was asking yeah. Alexa, I said, Alexa, who is Wayne Dyer? Alexa, who is Wayne Dyer? Wayne Walter Dyer was an American philosopher, self-help author, and a motivational speaker. It's so hilarious because you could ask her anything. Do you think anything. she knows who you are? Me? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't think so. Hold I'm on. not that famous. Oh, come on. Alexa, who is Anita Morjani? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you. Alexa, who is Anita Morjani? She has to know. Anita Morjani is a New York Times best-selling author of the book Dying to Be Me, <laughs> speaker, and intercultural consultant yeah. for multinational corporations. You're kidding See, me. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> she knows. <laughs> I guess. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so weird. So we, we talk to her all the time. So, Alexa, tell us a joke. <laughs> Alexa, tell us a joke. I hope it's appropriate. What's an English teacher's favorite cereal? The Grape Nuts of Wrath. Okay. <laughs> so silly. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, do you want another question? Yes, please. Okay. Um, Gwendolyn says, I have not started making money from my new business and work has slowed down. How do I stay stress-free when you can't see your financial future? Okay, so um, I know finances are always a tough one for people. Um, there's a few things I want to say about that. One would be I would ask you to review your beliefs about finances. I'm just going to turn the oven off here. Um, I would ask you to review, like, do you have any, are you holding any kind of um, judgments about, uh, about money? And what's always interesting to know is that what kind of business is it? Is it something you're passionate about? Because here's the thing, when you are really clear about what it is that you want to do, um, and when you are doing something that's following your passion, the money starts to come to you easier. I want to be a little more thoughtful about saying this, so I just needed a minute to, because I've actually written a whole piece about money and why it eludes people. And I actually feel that people who are empathic, who are super sensitive, have more trouble making money than those who are not, because they tend to be people who give away their money and give away services and give, and. Um, they give them away for free and are terrible at receiving. So 
my question to you would be, are you someone who's really, really good at giving and giving of yourself and terrible at receiving? We need to look at our receiving channels and be okay with receiving abundance. People who are super sensitive feel guilty when they receive. And that could be something that's blocking you from accepting or receiving money. Because when you are able to receive, when you're good at receiving, when you know that by receiving you can do more good in the world, and when you really get that, then actually it starts to open you up. It changes your priorities. And then you start to even find it easier to make money. So it's really about focusing on uh, when I get abundant. It's about focusing on opening your abundance channels, um, getting used to it by doing something positive for yourself every day. And it's about also knowing that when I'm abundant, this is what I'm going to do. This is how it's going to help me and this is how it's going to help other people around me. And as you get more clear on that, it'll start to come. Excellent. A lot of people appreciated what you just said. Thank you. Um, Nanda says, we all know doing right thing is good, but we sometimes get driven by the sensual pleasure, which may not be right. What to do that time? I don't think there's anything wrong with sensual pleasure. If I really don't, because um, my guess is that the fact that you're listening to me, to me speak, and that was Nanda, right? The fact that you're here listening to me speak, attracted to my work, my guess is that you're someone who's very caring and thoughtful, and that's why you're even asking this question. And I would say the fact that you're aware and you're asking this question, you don't have to worry about it. You really don't have to worry about it. Because the people who really um, are, let's say, more abusive or who are more narcissistic or who uh, are over the top, they probably wouldn't be interested in this kind of work anyway. So, um, yeah, so don't worry about it. Nicole likes your uh, shirt. She says, look at you, Edge Girl, with the skull design. <laughs> oh, I love it. I just love the colors. I love the colors. And, um, and in fact, the lady who designed and made it, um, she has this great... I, I bought it from a, from a handicraft um, street fair, and I, and I just fell in love with it. But I fell in love with a whole bunch of things. I have this jacket with angel wings on the back and all. And she, so this lady creates it, and she's just great. And earlier I saw her posting on my Instagram because she saw that I was wearing this, so which is so cool. So Lupe, if you're there, hi Lupe. <laughs> Um, Alicia asks, she says her husband's Christian and he wants to baptize the baby. Um, it's important for him. When I hear what the priest says, this is the only way to redemption, love, defense against evil. She doesn't agree with that. She, she agrees with what you say. So is it right to let him and his family baptize the baby even though she doesn't believe in it? Um, so that would really be uh, entirely up to you. So what I feel is that very often people do these things because they're afraid of the consequences. Danny's plating the omelet. So if it makes you feel happy to, um, to, to do what your husband wants, if it makes him feel happy, then absolutely. There's nothing wrong in doing it. I have no judgment against it. And if people feel strongly about it, go for it. But it's not something that's necessary that you need to do. The most important thing for a baby is love. It's love and it's being in a loving environment. That's the most important thing. Do you want, should we do one last question before the food is ready? Do sure, you, okay. we can do one last um, question. Manon says, so have you put any thoughts into starring in your own movie <laughs> with Danny? You two star in the movie about your life. What oh you my gosh, that would be funny. I mean, I think I'd be a terrible actor. I, Danny would be great, but I think I would be terrible at acting in my own movie. Um, I and even I admit it's actually a very difficult role because the pain and the struggle that I went through, I, it was really challenging. And so they're looking for somebody who's very strong who can carry that role. But, you know, it's funny. It's a thought. Thank you for the thought. <laughs> what do, you, do you want to keep going? Do you want to so, say goodbye? We've been on for a while. Yeah, yeah, so in fact, we can end soon. So I'm just going to make some chai, oh, some cool. tea. 
And, um, hey, folks at home, you want to watch her make the chai? That's my tea cozy, <laughs> which I love. And so what I, just real quick, I'll show them. I actually put um, cardamoms into my, I don't know if you can see, but I put cardamoms into my tea. And I put, um, I put black tea bags. And the real key, the real secret, is to put hot milk. I warm up the milk and put it in. Hot milk makes all the difference. So I'm gonna make my tea. We still use a traditional teapot <laughs> and a tea cozy. Do you have any reminders about your cornbread? Have you checked on it recently? I switched off the okay. oven. <laughs> I switched it off because, yes, I think it's done. I wonder if I should pull it out and, and, and show it to you. Yeah. All right, let's pour the tea. You can see how clumsy we are in the kitchen. I'll just pour the tea. Someone's asking about when the when is the movie coming out? What date will it be released? You don't have that information yet, do you? No, no we we're only at the like they're at the script writing stage and still contemplating which actors and also still looking for investors, studios, it's all like coming together. There's so many components to it. I never knew how complicated it was to make a movie. But as you get information, you're going to be sharing it on your pages, right? Yep. Yes. I will be sharing it. And okay. with your newsletter list. And I'll be sharing it to my newsletter list. So please do sign up to my newsletter list. Okay, it's a bit lumpy, but I hope it tastes good. <laughs> oh, that looks good. Mm. <laughs> I hope it I tastes. can't wait. <laughs> so yeah, please stay tuned. Up, up, um, next week we're going to be traveling. We're going to be uh, flying off to Asia, and so. But I will still try and schedule in a Facebook Live. But please do sign up for my newsletter. I would love that because we send out these videos and other information on my newsletter. I tell you guys where I'm going to be, which country I'm in, where I'm speaking. So I'd love to see you on my newsletter. Um, and so I guess thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks so much. We're gonna say bye, but he's cool. Bye. <laughs> bye. Bye. I'm gonna get All a right, shot. Just rolling this omelet. <laughs> Important Busy. work. Yes. There. <laughs> Real quick, one last question. Someone's sure. asking about the new book. When is the third book coming out? Do you oh, have a the, tentative date uh, in mind? Yes, next year, um, fall of 2019. And now, I mean, since you mentioned the third book, yes, yeah, so the title is going to be Sensitive is the New Strong. Um, I think my editor wants to call it Why Sensitive is the New Strong. And so just a real quick shout out. Uh, I still meet people a lot who say they don't even realize my second book has come out. Most people know me because of the book Dying to Be Me. Many people have said um, that, that, oh, you have a second book? Is it out? I say, yes, it came out like uh, last year. Um, so my second book is What If This Is Heaven? If you haven't read it, I would love for you to read it because um, uh, I guess the people who've read it, I've got pretty good feedback from. So. So I do have a second book. It's called What If This Is Heaven? My third book is coming out next year. Another quick thing I want to add is that sometimes people wonder, they say, oh, but you have that NDE. You spoke about it in your first book. Um, what, what's in your second book? What's in your third book? And why do you need to write about the NDE so many times? The other books are not about the near-death experience. Only the first one is. The other books gives you the kind of information that I'm giving you on these Facebook Lives. The other books are generally about how life or how I view life after having had such an experience. And there are so many aspects of life that, um, that it affects because when you've had an experience like that, and for those of you who've had spiritual experiences, who've had near-death experiences, you'll know what I'm talking about. It changes the way you view life. It's like as if you've been blind your whole life and then suddenly you can see, like just for one day, you have sight. And then suddenly everything makes sense because there are things you didn't understand before because you were blind. And now it's like, oh my gosh, I understand. I understand what colors are. Um, I understand what distance means. And there's all this clarity. And so, um, and, and so once you have that clarity, but even if you go back to being blind, your perspective on life is different. So everything I talk about is from that 
perspective, whether it's talking about um, food or whether it's talking about stress or whether it's talking about love or whatever it is. So there's many different uh, topics I cover and, and I talk about things as I experience them myself. Um, but just to remind you, I'm also human, just like you. Is there... can, I, can I say something yes. as someone who has read What If This Is Heaven? Sure. What I love about it is you share your wisdom and what you've learned and it helps me make my life better because of it. So I'm better off having read it because of the wisdom the book shares with me, especially um, the section on forgiveness was, is just phenomenal. I mean, each chapter is so amazing, but basically, you know, your wisdom helps us make our lives better. Oh, so thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you for saying that. And um, and I, oh, and the last thing I just wanted to show you was I got these new booties, I mean, these socks, these, uh, and they match my they're website. So <laughs> I saw them and I had to get them. So they are, um, they're like, they're beach shoes, like they've got rubber soles, but I had to show them because, because I love the colors and I, I had to buy the them. the U.S. booties have a different meaning than they do in Europe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're socks. Ever they're so they're Ever beach. So slight different meaning. <laughs> Uh oh, we, I we have... like all of it, all types of booties. <laughs> <laughs> I might have said something inadvertently. <laughs> Sorry great. about that if I did. But yeah, I I love these because I love the color <laughs> or the colors. So thank you all for tuning in. This was so much fun, and I think our omelets are on the table. And maybe Milena can even. Over. Uh, no, yeah, let's go look at the table. Look at that. Yum. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in.